minutes today and we have a lot to cover. Um, so my name is Bryn Burgess. I'm on the marketing team here at Sprig um, and really excited to join you here today with our solutions consultant, Denise Dominguez. Um, I'm gonna walk you through a quick overview of Sprig and then pass it over to Denise to dive into the platform, show you the back end, and show you how everything works. Um, if you have any questions for us, please feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, we will be taking questions um, throughout the webinar, and we're going to save a couple of minutes at the end to go through um, some deeper questions. So with that, uh, let's dive in. So as I mentioned, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Sprig and Sprig at the end of the day is a product experience platform um, that gets you answers to your questions really quickly. Um, we work with some of the best top tech companies in the space. Um, you can see on this slide, we work with Dropbox, we work with Loom, we work with Square, we work with Open Door. Um, and we really help power their um, insights programs at those organizations. And where we fit into kind of the ecosystem when you're thinking about all of the different product insights platforms and tools um, is that we really think that most companies have a product blind spot. So teams are all really data driven. They wanna get to the why behind their users' actions, but they're really relying on incomplete information about how users are experiencing their product to make some of these decisions. Um, they have behavioral data in product analytics, they have revenue data in sales reports, the so Salesforce dashboards, for example, um, but what they're missing is experience data, um, which can come in the form of surveys or session replay data. Um, the best product teams, the teams that we work with, um, do look at that experience data and combine that with traditional analytics to understand really deeply the why behind the actions in the product and how they really feel about the experience that they are having within your product. Um, and combining those three types of data, behavioral, revenue, and experience data together is a really powerful way to do that. Um, so as I mentioned, Sprig is a user insights platform that really allows you to have all of the data and all of the information um, to help you build better products. And we do that through two specific tools um, that Denise is going to dive a lot more deeply into when we dive into the platform. Um, but at our core, um, we have two, two products. One is in product surveys which allows you to launch a survey to your users as they're experiencing your product um, and get their feedback directly there. Um, and the second is a concept or usability test, um, which allows you to embed a prototype um, and get feedback asynchronously from your users on that prototype and that experience. Um, and last, before I turn it over to Denise, um, just wanted to hit on why teams really do love Sprig. Um, one thing that is what we hear from our customers all the time is that they love how easy it is to target users based off specific actions that they take um, and attributes that they have built out in our product without the support of engineering. Um, so that is extremely powerful. Um, they love our AI analysis, um, which goes through all of our open text responses and groups them into different themes. Um, so you don't have to spend your time manually coding um, responses and grouping those into themes. Um, we have an unlimited seats model, uh, so that way those insights can be available to everyone on your team, whether they fit in product or research or design, um, they have insights to your Sprig, uh, the Sprig insights that you collect. And then last but not least, um, we really pride ourselves on having enterprise grade security, um, support and reliability. Um, so it's a platform that you can trust and with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Denise to dive into Sprig. Awesome. Thanks, Bryn, for going through that and providing the context there. So, so yeah, I'll be running us through both of our product offerings here, our in-product surveys, along with our concept and usability testing. But yeah, if there's any questions, just feel free to pop them in the chat or in that Q&A section. So with that, 
just getting started here, you know, I think really one of the key things that Sprig offers is unlimited seats. So anyone can have access and just visibility into the data that's being collected within Sprig. So it does come with different permission levels, but what's really great is you can start to create these folders based off of different either critical user journeys, product areas, or again, anything that might be relevant to different team members. And all of these visuals we generate for you, but you can see, you can pin various study results within a single dashboard view, but all of this can be exported. And I think this is really the biggest value add is our open text AI, like Bryn mentioned. Um, we'll generate these key sentence-like themes that are again, more meaningful, more impactful and actionable that your team can actually um, take away from. So actually getting started. Like we mentioned, there are two different product offerings, surveys and concept and usability tests. So it's really great here, especially when you're considering in-product surveys, um, getting an idea of best practices. You know, we've had expert researchers that have gone in here and created over 75 templates that are a great starting point or great, again, brainstorm into specific use cases. How many questions should you be asking? Um, how should you frame the question, depending again on your use case? How can we really get more granular than just a simple NPS or CSAT? We can still track and measure CSAT and NPS, but again, you'll notice different templates depending again on your desired use case. You can also utilize these in-product surveys to recruit users for moderated sessions, schedule time with them immediately, or even redirect them to an out of product concept test. But focusing on this example here, these are also fully customizable. So you and your teams can fully customize the sizing, font color, font type, add your logo, remove the powered by Sprig and really make it feel like it's a part of your brand. And that's for both web, mobile applications. We support mobile iOS, mobile Android. And then we also have our standalone link based survey in your traditional method there. But if we focus on web, you'll notice even when I select this template, full control of editing the question, I can change the rating scale visual, but again, fully customizable. And what's really great is how can we get really targeted questions within this moment? And then how can I ask a very specific question based off of the first answer? So we do have that advanced skip logic that's available if we wanted to start to redirect the user to a different follow-up. But once the questions have been set up, really getting into the targeting here, if we focus on web, but again, our different delivery methods, but focusing on web in this example, We'll look at two different layers of targeting. Think about this first layer of the action or the end trigger that you would like to use to present the in-product survey. So if we take the onboarding experience, for example, let's say we wanna start measuring that critical user journey about new users coming in and creating their account for the first time that end action that I would use would be that final creation of account. What's that end and final click or screen that the end user sees that's non-intrusive and that again would always um, prompt higher response rates. And what's really great is these events or actions are typically tracked in a product analytics tool. This could be you know, amplitude, mix panel, um, and then that's how we would pull them over into Sprig. And what's great, it's a one-time setup. So once the team has set this up, you can have this drop-down list for um, you know, your choosing. Another thing that Sprig offers, which is really great, is for web-based, is we actually have what are called no-code events. So you can create an event or trigger based off of a page URL, get more advanced with that URL, a text field, or even a design element. So really being able to, again, create your own triggers and not rely on engineering there. Denise, we do have one question coming in from uh, Duke, and he was asking about how many questions could be in a survey. 
Great question. Um, so we typically recommend for in-product surveys anywhere from two to four questions to really achieve high response rates. Um, but there is no limitation. You can have as many questions as you want within, especially can, since you can send that shareable link survey if you wanted a longer form survey. But for targeted in-product questions, that's um, typically the range that we that we recommend. Great question. Moving on here, um, you know, you can add a second delay or this second optional level of targeting, which is attribute targeting or user segmenting. So anything that your product is already tracking, you know, let's say, for instance, we really want to start measuring conversion and we want to actually start to target users that are on our free plan and see why users are converting or not converting. So you can then start really segmenting users based off of, again, these user attributes that your product analytics tools are already tracking. And again, you can have this drop down list. This is great for A-B testing um, or, again, kind of narrowing down a niche group. You can also even target events within here. So we want to target a free plan user that created their account X days ago. And you'll notice again, I can get really granular in my audience tab. I didn't need to rely on engineering one time setup. I can quickly just set this up within minutes, click launch, and then start receiving responses immediately. So with that, I'm going to move over to the analysis of an in-product survey question. But I'd be curious to know, you know, from, from the chat here, or just anyone on this on this call today is if you are utilizing any in product surveys today and um, how you're seeing your response rates come in. And the reason I say that is with Sprig, we do tend to see a higher response rate, typically because of the level of customization that we have the targeted level of our event architecture. We really do tend to see a response rate anywhere from 30 to 40% across our platforms. Some customers even see a higher response rate because of their um, targeting levels are so, you know, their customers are so engaging with them. But this data is all exportable. Depending on your question type, you'll get these easy to read visuals, easy to share out, very digestible. But again, this can all be exported to another data warehouse or data visual. But like I mentioned from the beginning, the biggest value add is our open text AI. So, our AI model is very different than the competitors in the space. We generate these sentence-like themes that are more meaningful and, again, more actionable and digestible for team members. The responses don't need to have overlapping words, and we'll still group responses together because we're looking at the context of what these end users are saying. So just seeing the word registration, what about registration? What does that mean to me? Where should I put my attention to? So that's where, again, these sentence-like themes come into play. You'll also get a sentiment score related to that theme. But what's really great is um, we have these annotators in-house that we assign to customer accounts that, again, kind of have that human in the loop process. So that way it's verifying that the AI is developing these themes appropriately. And again, just training the AI model um, to really see these themes in your product terminology and your end user terminology there. Yeah, can't imagine, you know, we hear a lot of customers coming in or switching over as they were using word clouds or they were using, you know, their own internal mechanism of coding, which would take so much time and effort. Um, so just imagine the speed um, that you'd actually be able to run through and, you know, teams can work more quicker, UXRs can really focus more on that user research or strategic research there. But that's essentially an overview of our in-product surveys. I'm gonna switch over to our concept and usability testing flow. So focusing here on these templates. So we have a few templates, again, depending on your determined use case. I'm gonna utilize this interactive usability test example. But what's really great is we keep the same UI. So it's very consistent throughout, very user-friendly, easy to set up. The main difference here is where I can attach my prototype URL. So you'll notice we can support various different prototyping or wireframing and mock-up tools. 
curious, you know, from the team, how the, how they're, you know, running in product or concept testing today, or what mock-up tools or prototyping tools y'all are using, but you'll notice we do support quite a bit. And what's great about Sprig is there's no limitations. You can set up a very simple concept test or a more interactive um, usability test. And then you can also include various prototypes within a single test. So maybe you want to test multiple concepts within a single test, or maybe you want to break out the flows within a single test. You can also keep the same prototype throughout the test there, but I'm actually going to showcase a live example for the end user. And then highlighting here, this is an out of product experience. This is a standalone link that we would use to share out. But again, we can use this link to target a user within an in-product survey with a recruiting prompt. So I'm going to move forward to showing an actual live example here. So once you click launch, you'll get this unique Sprig link that again, anyone can access. And we really wanna make it really as user-friendly for your end users. Um, so we do not require them to download an extension, create any kind of account. It's again, as user-friendly as possible for the end user taking this test. This would be your logo, your color scheme. And again, this is just an example flow, but you'll notice you can add instructions, bold information, we do also have a consent or legal question, consent and NDA question, if you wanted to include a full document or a simple privacy agreement. This full name is completely optional as well. But like I mentioned, especially when you're asking the end user to record themselves, they don't even have to download an extension or software or anything like that. We're fully browser-based. They just need to give browser permissions. Once they've given browser permissions once, they'll go ahead and enable, and you'll see me here on my screen. And then you determine for the end user if you want them to record their video, screen, and or audio. I'll confirm I'm sharing the right one. And this is an example of that recorded task. I'll read my task. And then this is essentially the Figma prototype or again, whatever other prototyping tool you're use, utilizing. Um, and it'll showcase here. And again, it doesn't have to be interactive. It can be a static image. There's no limitations. And you don't have to ask this recorded question. It can be a multiple choice, open text, rating scale. I can even hide the study if needed. But this is essentially the flow. Again, we have that advanced skip logic, so we can continue moving forward with that skip logic and redirecting users. But really from there, the analysis comes into play as well. So this is that exact example we just walked through. These are some of the prompt questions, but for that recorded task, when we are asking end users to be recorded, we'll look at users that completed the task, users that gave up, average time for response, and then I can even dive into each individual video. If I selected video, we'll see their video screen versus their actual web screen. And we also provide a transcription for all of these responses. If you wanted the unique link, you could always download the responses through a CSV and share it out, or again, export this to another data warehouse. You know, if you're using tools like Dovetail and you wanted to have this specific video link and um, in that repository that's always possible. Well, with that, that's one question type. Same visualization for our rating scales and multiple choice. I can change the visual and same open text analysis. These responses tend to be a little bit more lengthy. So one response, depending on the context, can be tied to multiple themes. So it's really great that we are taking all the all the good bits from one response and really again catering to your specific product and terminology there. Awesome. I do see a question from Amanda. Is, is that the one that you're about to point out, Bryn? It sure <laughs> is. 
Awesome. So, um, Amanda, so Amanda, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, Amanda wanted to better understand how you prevent repeated responses from one person. Great question. So it will depend if we're looking at our in-product surveys. If I go into the audience tab here, we do have the option for recontact. So here I essentially enable only show this once per user. So if that means a user responded or didn't interact with that part with that in product survey, that would count as one. I can allow users to retake the study if I wanted to. Um, and then this is the same logic that we could do for the concept and usability tests. We could essentially enrich the URL with a user ID. So that way we track that user ID or variant ID, maybe it's email. So that way we are only capturing one response for individual users. So two different ways of only capturing one response for, for all, for both of our products. 